Okay, so this story is called Crossing Bakchito, a Choctaw Tale of Friendship and Freedom by Tim Tingle. It's illustrated by Jean Rorex Bridges. Um, and it was on the Texas Blue Bonnet Master Award list, 2008 to 2009. Crossing Bakchito, A Choctaw Tale of Friendship and Freedom by Tim Tingle. And Tim Tingle is a Choctaw storyteller, and this story is a story that was passed down in the oral tradition. He's the one who wrote it down. So, first picture. There is a river called Bakchito that cuts through Mississippi. In the days before the war between the states, in the days before the Trail of Tears, Bakchito was a boundary. On one side of the river lived the Choctaws, a nation of Indian people. On the other side lived the plantation owners and their slaves. If a slave escaped and made his way across Bakchito, the slave was free. The slave owner could not follow. That was the law. One Sunday morning during this time, a Choctaw mama woke her daughter up. Martha Tom, the sun has been up for two hours. Get up and put your dress on, you lazy little girl. I have a wedding to cook for today. Take this basket and fill it with blackberries. Now hurry back. When Martha Tom couldn't find black blackberries on the Choctaw side of the river, she did something she'd been told never to do. She went crossing Bakchito. The only way to cross Bakchito in those days was a stone path just beneath the surface of the river. Only the Choctaws knew it was there for the Choctaws had built it. When the river flooded, they built the stones up. When the river sank in times of drought, they built the stones down, always just, between, just beneath the muddy surface of the water. There's Martha Tom. Martha Tom found a patch of blackberries on the slave side of the river. She filled her basket, then looked to the sky for the sun to leave her, lead her home. But it was cloudy and she was lost. Martha Tom thought she was approaching the river, but instead she was walking still deeper into the woods. She came upon a stump covered with grapevines. Before her lay a clearing filled with logs, rolled out as if they were benches. Martha Tom saw someone coming and dove into the vines. A skinny black man with a cane stepped out of the trees. While Martha Tom watched, he climbed onto the stump and called out, we are bound for the promised land. <clears throat> what do you think is happening? What happened next would change Martha Tom's life forever. Though she saw no one, a hundred voices came in reply, like spirit voices whispering, we are bound for the promised land. The old man called out again, we are bound for the promised land. Once again, she heard the voices, human voices this time, closer and closer they came, calling, we are bound for the promised land. The old man bowed his head and said, oh, who will come and go with me? A hundred slaves replied, stepping out from behind the trees and rising up from the bushes where they were hiding. We will come and go with you. We are bound for the promised land. <clears throat> it was the calling together of the forbidden slave church deep in those Mississippi woods. The old man began to preach and the people began to sing. Martha Tom had never heard music like this before, but it touched her deeply. Then something else touched her on the shoulder. She looked up to see the biggest man she had ever seen, his chest so big it was about to pop the buttons off his shirt. You're lost, little girl, he said in a deep voice that seemed to smile. You're Choctaw from across Bakchito? Martha Tom nodded. What is your name, little girl? Martha Tom. Well, Martha Tom, I'll get my son to take you back to the river. You can find your way home from there. Little Mo, he called. A boy appeared. Little Mo, this girl is lost. She is chalked off from across Black Cheeto. Take her to the river bank and she can go home from there. Daddy, I better not do that, Little Mo said. The men from the plantation house told us if the children are seen playing near the river, our whole family will get in trouble. His father knelt down to Little Mo and said, son, son, it's about time you learn. There is a way to move amongst them where they won't even notice you. It's like you're invisible. You move not too fast, not too slow, eyes to the ground, away you go. Now give it a try and get this little girl home. Well, it sounded like a fun game to play, so Little Mo took Martha Tom by the hand and off they went, just as Little Mo's daddy had taught him. Not too fast, not too slow, eyes to the ground, away you go. They skirted the plantation house and walked right in front of the porch where the owners were doing their sipping and sighing that Sunday morning, but no one paid them any mind. We must be invisible, thought little Mo. They 
They soon arrived at the river and it was Martha Tom's turn to leave. She took little Mo to the path, but he couldn't see the stones beneath the muddy water. This will be a fun game to play, she thought. She walked five paces back to get a good running start, then leapt to the river. Little Mo reached out to grab her dress as she flew by to keep her from drowning. Then when Martha Tom landed in the river, she stood up. Little girl, what kind of witch are you? Little Mo cried. Martha Tom laughed. I'm not any kind of witch. You can do it too. Come on. She took little Mo by the hand and together the two of them went crossing Bok Cheeto to the Choctaw side. Even before they stepped from the stones to the earth, little Mo heard the sound of chanting. He thought it must be the heartbeat of the earth itself. It was the old men calling the Choctaws to the wedding ceremony. Martha Tom and little Mo looked down the street of log homes as Choctaw women stepped out of every doorway. Their white cotton dresses skimmed the ground and their shiny black hair fell well below their waists. The women formed a line and began a, a stomp dance to the beat of the chanting, gliding to a clearing at the end of town. When they reached the clearing, they formed two circles, the women and the men, and the wedding ceremony began. The old men began to sing the old wedding song. It is still sung today in Mississippi and Oklahoma, just as they sang it then. Way hey ya hey ya, you a hey you a, a hey ya a hey ya. Way hey ya hey ya, you a hey you a, a hey ya a hey ya. Little Mo had never heard music like this before, but it touched him deeply. Then something else touched them both on the shoulder. It was Martha Tom's mother. Little girl, little girl, you have been crossing Bok Chino. Now I'm not mad at him, but you take him to the river and come right back. And give me those blackberries. You are in for it now. Martha Tom knew her mother could cackle like a mad crow on the outside, but inside she would coo like a dove with love for her daughter. She took little Mo to the river and showed him how to cross on his own. And so began a friendship that would last for years. Every Sunday morning, Martha Tom would cross Bok Cheeto on her way to church. She sat with little Mo's family now. She listened to the preaching and she sang the songs in English. Then every evening she would sing them in Choctaw as she went crossing Bok Cheeto on her way home. Then one day trouble came. It always does. In stories or in life, trouble comes. There was a slave sale and 20 slaves were sold. They were to leave for New Orleans the very next day before sunrise. The men from the slave, slave households were called together to listen to the names being read. Little Mo's mother was on that list. As he walked home, Little Mo's father wondered how to tell his family what had happened. He decided to let them have their last meal in peace. When the children stood near the table, he met, motioned for them to be seated. Feeling his knees grow weak, he said, your mother has been sold. No, she cried. The tears started, the tears seemed to squirt down her cheeks. The children looked at their parents and began to cry. They had never seen their mother and father like this. This is our last evening together, he said. Stop your crying. I want every one of you to find something small and precious Something to give your mother to remember you by, something she can hide, something they can't take away. Now get up and help your mother pack. You will not see her again. No one moved. Then little Mo pulled his father's leaves and set, sleeve and said, Daddy, there is a way we can stay together. We can go crossing Bok Cheeto. Martha Tom told me how. Son, they'll have the dogs guarding the river tonight to prevent a crossing. Daddy, we can go just like you taught me, not too fast, not too slow, eyes to the ground, away you go, we'll be invisible. Daddy, we have to give it a try. For the first time that day, hope filled the father's heart. You are right, son. We have to give it a try. He grabbed seven burlap bags and gave one to each member of his family, saying, pack quickly, pack light, and pack for running. We may have to. They did pack quickly. They packed light, but they were not quick enough. The men in the plantation house saw them working late. They called for the guards with the dogs and the lanterns and the guns, and they surrounded that little house. When little Mo's daddy stood with his family around, he looked out the back door and said, we could go out that way. It would be dark and maybe safer, but this night's journey is not about darkness and safety. It's about faith. It's about freedom. We will go out through the front door. And so they did out the front door, down the front steps, walking just as little Mo had reminded them, not too fast, not too slow, eyes to the ground, away you go. Then something remarkable happened. This family became invisible. 
They walked into the circle of lanterns, but the light shone right through them. They walked so close to the dogs, they could have stroked the dog's fur, but even the dogs did not know they were there. They were invisible. Soon they stood on the banks of Bok Chido. Little Mo looked to the clouds covering the moon and said, Daddy, I've never been here at night. I can't get us across. His father picked up Little Mo up and sat him on his hip till their faces almost touched. Son, the hour is at hand, he said. You know that we call you Little Mo, but you know that that is not your real name. Your name is Moses. Now, Moses, get us across that water. Moses leapt down and ran to the river. He dipped his arms into the chilly waters till he found the stone path. Quick as a bird, he flew across the stones and burst into Martha Tom's home. I'm sorry, I know it's late, he said, but we are trying to cross the river. The men are after us, the men with the dogs and the lanterns and guns. Can you help us? Martha Tom's mother jumped out of bed and talked as she dressed. Son, run to your family and hide them in the bushes near the path. Go now, run. You'll know when to come across. Go, I have work to do. <clears throat> she went to every home in that village, pushed open the doors and called inside. Women, put on your white dresses. Bring a candle and meet me at the river. We're having a ceremony tonight, the crossing kind. And so it came to pass. The guards stood on the slave side of the river with their dogs and lanterns and guns. Suddenly they saw emerging from the white fog on the Choctaw side what looked to them like a band of angels. The angels <clears throat> carried candles that cast a, ho a hollow glow in the fog around their faces. Rising from the bushes and coming to life in front of them, the guards saw seven runaway slaves. They lifted their guns to fire. They never shot their guns that night for stepping out of the band of an angels. They saw the most beautiful little angel of them all. Her right hand held a candle, her left hand was outstretched and she was walking on the water. Martha Tom was singing a song she had learned at the slave church, but now she sang it in Choctaw. Nitakish tayo pikmano, chisus ut minitit, umala holitopama, chihat aya lakshi, we are bound for the promised land. She took little Mo by the hand, he took his mother, she took the children, they took their father, and together all seven of them went crossing Bakchito. When they reached the Choctaw side of the river, they blew the candles out and disappeared into the fog, never to be seen on the slave side again. The descendants of those people still talk about that night. The Choctaws talk about the bravery of that little girl, Martha Tom. The black people talk about the faith of that little boy, Moses. But maybe the white people tell it best. They talk about the night their forefathers witnessed seven black spirits walking on water to their freedom. And that is the end. Um, there's an author's note, but I think it's going to make it too long. So that is Crossing Bakchito, a Choctaw tale of friendship and freedom.